This is section 10.2, day two. We're working on Pascal's triangle and binomial theorem. The Pascal's triangle is a triangular shape that's actually made up of all the combinations. There, there's a pattern to it. And I'll first work through the notes, and then we'll put together the Pascal's triangle, then we'll use it with the binomial theorem. The first and last numbers in each row will have a 1. And every other number other than the 1 is the sum of the two previous numbers above it. So you start with the 1, you end with the 1, and then these two numbers add to be 5 or add to be 10. It's a very elementary pattern, but it's actually very unique in the way that it can be used towards our combinations. This triangle here is just mimicking the Pascal's triangle as combinations. Zero items, choosing zero of them. There's only one way that that can occur. One item, choosing zero of them, you don't take it. There's only one way that that can happen. Or one item, choose one, there's only one way, you take it. Two items, choosing zero of them, there's only one way. Two items, choose one of them, there's two ways that that can occur. You can take the first item or you can take the second item. Two items, choosing two of them, there's only one way that that can occur. Notice how it starts with the one and ends with the one, and the middle number is the sum of the previous two above it. 3C0 is a one. 3C1, you have three items, you're choosing three of, or you're choosing one of them. There's three ways that that can happen. Three items, you're choosing two of them. Some might think about it as you're leaving one of them out. But there's still three ways that you can do that. You can choose the first and second item. You can choose the first and last item. You can choose the second and last item. Those are your three ways. 3C3, if you're going to choose all three items, there's only one way to do that. Notice how it starts with one and ends with one. And the middle numbers are all the sum of the previous numbers right above it. So if you were to do a basic story problem, out of five finalists, your class must choose three class representatives. The Pascal's Triangle, we're going to use the Pascal's Triangle to find the number of combinations of three students that can be chosen as representatives. Notice how this is a combination because the order doesn't matter. It's not a president, vice president, and secretary where if you change the order, they have different positions. It's a different group. Here, we're just looking for representatives. It doesn't matter in what order that they get picked. So we're planning to use 5C3. Five students to choose from, and we're going to pick three of them. So we look at our fifth row. Our fifth row would be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. You would know that based off of your fourth row and looking at the numbers, the, the two right above to add together. We have 5C0, 5C1, 5C2, 5C3. So if you want to calculate what 5C3 is, you can look on the Pascal's triangle and notice that 5C3, we have 0, 1, 2, 3. This would be your 5C3. You could look at 5C4 and 5C5. So in other words, 5C3 is the fourth value in the row of the Pascal's Triangle. So 5C3 is 10. In other words, there are 10 combinations of the class representatives. If you wanted to work to figure out from a collection of seven baseball hats, you want to trade three of them. You're going to get rid of three baseball hats. 
use Pascal's triangle to find the number of combinations of three caps that can be traded. Notice it says combination, but also that this is a combination because when you pick your three hats to get rid of, it doesn't necessarily matter if you pick the hat first or last, you're still getting rid of it. Order doesn't matter. So if we're looking for 7C3, and we already know the fifth row, which is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1, our sixth row, you start with a 1, you add the two numbers above it, that would be the sixth row. The seventh row, you'd start with a 1, you add the two numbers above it, so you get 35, add the 15 and the 20 to also get 35, and it comes back down. There will always be a pattern of how it mirrors itself on both sides. So this value here would be seven items choosing zero of them, seven items choosing one of them, seven items choosing two of them, and here is your seven items choosing three of them. There's 35 ways that you could have seven items and you're going to choose three of those seven items. Now let's make a Pascal's triangle from scratch. You've got to know that it's going to start out with one, one, and one. You always start out your row with a one, you add your two numbers above it, and you end with a 1. Start with a 1, add your two numbers above it, so 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, and end. And you can continue this pattern really infinitely. Once we get up above 10, it gets a little crazy. Take your two previous numbers above it that add 15 plus 20 is 35. It seems like a very elementary pattern. I always make a joke that my second grader could do this. But how we use it is very high school math. What it means in terms of combinations is very advanced, but just adding two numbers above it is relatively basic. So you could continue this pattern on and on repeatedly, there's no end to it. Once it gets past this, it gets a little crazy. This is your Pascal's triangle. We're going to use and we could calculate what uh, 8C4 is, 8C4. So this is 8C0, 8C1, 8C2, 8C3, 8C4 is 70. There's now no need to do the formula of 8 factorial over 8 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial to figure that all out. Also, a good pattern to recognize is the sum of this row is 1, the sum of that row is 2, 
the sum of this row is 4, the sum of this row is 8, 16, 32, 64. You see the pattern, how it's doubling? This one adds up to 128, 256, 512, and 1024. Now, how would we figure out what the sum is without going all the way through? The sum to get 1 is 2 to the 0 power. The sum to get 2 is 2 to the 1st power because that's called the first row. This is called the 0 row. The second row is 2 to the 2nd power. That equals the total sum of that row, the total number of ways of choosing two items. There are four different ways that you could do that. There are eight different ways you could choose three items. There are 16 different ways you could work with four items. 32 ways, 64 ways of working with six items. And there's 1,024 ways of working with 10 items. If you worked with no items out of the 10, there's only one way you could do that. 10 ways of working with one out of the 10. 45 ways of working with two out of the 10. 1,024 ways if you consider all the possibilities of working with 10 items. Pascal's triangle. Now on the second page of 10.2, we're going to work with the binomial theorem. This is making use of the Pascal's triangle. It's making use of the entire row. This is the, the basic definition of the binomial theorem. Here you're working with a binomial. You have two terms added together or even subtracted, raised to a power. If you follow this pattern, which is the NCR, your first term, which is we call the A term, raised to the maximum power, and your B term raised to a zero power. You take NCR, which is one extra, NC1, and you're going to take one away from the power of the A, and you're going to add one to the B, and you continue that pattern all the way through. It sounds extremely complicated here, but when we work the problem out, it won't be too bad. Here's a formula for you that you'll definitely need to answer some of the homework questions. NCR, which is your number of terms, it's a combination, and how many you're choosing from. A, N minus R, B to the R. This is to help you determine what any single term and your polynomial is going to be. Some of the questions like to ask, what is the leading coefficient? So you would use this and help calculate out what your leading coefficient would be. This is the formula you would end up using. When you're working with the binomial theorem, we're going to write each coefficient in the term of the nth row of our Pascal's triangle. Whatever our power is here, we're going to use that row. Working from left to right, we're going to include the first term of the binomial theorem with each term of the ex expansion using exponents in descending order. And then working from left to right, we're going to include the second term, which is our b, in terms of the binomial uh, of our binomial with each term of the expansion using exponents in ascending order. So descending, we're going to get smaller every time with our first term, and we're going to get larger every time with our second term. Then you've got to group things up to simplify it. Let's try it here with example number three. Notice how x plus 4 to the 5th power, it has a 5 for our exponent, 
So we're going to use the fifth row of the Pascal's triangle. So using the fifth row, we bring in our notes that show us the fifth row is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. That's the entire number of ways that you can work with five items. So we write down 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. Spread that out across your paper. You want to leave good gaps in here. We're next going to take the A term. And we're going to put the A in here. The A next to the next term. And we're going to put the A all the way across to each of these terms. We're going to write them in descending order. So we're going to start the first one at the power of N, which is 5. And then 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Remember, anything raised to the zero power is a value of one. Then we're going to take our second term, which is the positive four, and we're going to put that next to our x. So we put a four in each of these spots. And we're going to write these in descending order. I'm sorry, ascending order. Ascending order, if you're working left to right. So we're going to start with zero, and then one, two, three, four, and five. Notice that the sum of your exponents before you do any simplifying should equal what your end value is in your original problem. Then we put our pluses in between. So we sit here and we look at the one times x to the fifth times 1, 5, x to the 4th, times 4, 10, x cubed, times 16, 10, x squared, times 64, 5, x, 4 to the 4th is 256, 1 times 1, 4 to the 5th is 1,024. So we've simplified our first row into our second row. Now we're going to work with the third row. 1 times x to the 5th times 1 is just x to the 5th. Here your 5 and your 4 make 20 x to the 4th. Here's 160x cubed, 640x squared, 1,280x, 1,024. You would get the same answer if you wrote this out five times and tried to foil it all together. You would get this value. That would seem much more complicated than using the binomial theorem, which is just a set of patterns that helps you come up with this polynomial of a power of 5. Let's try the next one. We're working with 2m minus n to the 4th power. It's the 4, so we're going to use the 4th row. Looking at our Pascal's triangle... The fourth row is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So we're at a 1, a 4, 6, 4, and 1. We're going to take our first term, which is 2m, and we're going to write that next to each one of our combinations. Then we're going to take our negative n and write that next to each one. We put a plus in between each term. The 2m starts with a 5 and works its way down, descending order. 
Let's see, I'm sorry, we're supposed to start with a four because this is the fourth row. We'd get a two, a one, and a zero. We're gonna take our B term, our second term here, and we're gonna start with zero and we're gonna work our way up. Notice how the sum of the exponents, before you do any simplifying, all adds up to your n term. 4 plus 0 is 4, 3 plus 1 is 4, 2 and 2 is 4, 1 and 3, 0 and 4. Now we start trying to clean it up. This is 1 times 2 to the 4th, m to the 4th, negative n to the 0 power is a value of 1. 4 to the third power, m to the third power, negative n to the first power, 6, 2 squared, m squared. When you square a negative, you get a positive. 2m to the first power. When you cube a negative, you get a negative. You get 1 times 1. When you raise a power to an even degree, you're going to get a positive term. Okay. So now this is 1, which isn't necessarily needed, to the 4th power, which is 16, m to the 4th times 1. This is 4 times 8, m cubed. You have the n and the negative is going to go in front, so it can go with the 4 plus 6 times 4 m squared n squared. The 4 2m n cubed and the negative goes in front with the 4 and you get 1 times 1 times n to the 4th. So now we're ready to do our final step. 16 m to the 4th, um, negative 32 m cubed n, a positive 24 m squared n squared, a negative 8m, n cubed, and n to the fourth power. That is your polynomial that represents 2m minus n to the fourth power.